ਕਿਆਮ ਤੇਨੇ ਨਾ ਜਨਾ ਸਦਾ ਕਿਆ ਚਚਰੁਲ ਮਿਨਿ ਤਮੇ ਨਾ ਤਸਮੈ ਸ਼੍ਰੀ ਗੁਰਵੇ ਨਮਹ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਚੈਤਨ ਮਨੋ ਮਿਸ਼ਟਾਂ ਸਾਪਤਾਂ ਮੇ ਨ ਮੂਤਲੇ ਸਵੈਮ ਰੂਪ ਗਦਾ ਮਈਂ ਅਮਰਦਾ ਕੀਸ਼ਾ ਪਦਾਂ ਦਿਤਮ ਵੰਦੇ ਹਮ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਗੁਰੋ ਸ਼ਿਵਤਾ ਪਦਮ ਲਮ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਨਵੈਸ਼ਨ ਵਾਮਸਾ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਰੂਪਮ ਸਾਗਰ ਜਾਤਾਂ ਸਾਗਨਾ ਰਵਨਾਤਾਂ ਤਮ ਤਮ ਸਰੀਵਾਂ ਸਾਧਵਿਤਮ ਸਾਵਦੂਤਮ ਪਰਿਜਨਾ ਸੈਤਾਂ ਕਿਸੂ ਚੈਤਨ ਲੇਵਾਂ ਸ੍ਰੀ ਰਾਧਾ ਕਿਸੂ ਪਾਦਾਂ ਸਾਗਨਾ ਲੰਸਾ ਸ਼ਿਵਸਾ ਤਮ ਤਮ ਸ ਨਮੋ ਸੁਪਾਲਾਇਆ ਕਿਸ਼ਨ ਪ੍ਰਸ਼ਾਇ ਮਿਤਲੇ ਸ਼ਿਮਤੇ ਭਗਤੀ ਵਿਦਾਨਤਾ ਸਾਮੇ ਨਿਤੀ ਨਾਮਨੇ ਨਮਸਤੇ ਸਾਰ ਸਤੇ ਦੇਵੇ ਗੌਰਵਾਨੀ ਚਾਰਨੇ ਨਿਰਵਿਸ਼ੇਸ਼ਾ ਸ਼ਿਵਾਦੀ ਪਾਸਾ ਤੇ ਸਤਾਰਨੇ ਵਾਂਚਾ ਕਲਪਤ ਗੁਰੂ ਸਾਗਰ ਪਾਸੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਸਾ ਪਤਿਤ ਨਾਮ ਪਾਵਨੇ ਦੇਵ ਵੈਸ਼ਨੇ ਗੁਰੂ ਨਮੋ ਨਮਹਾ ਨਮੋ ਮਹਾਵਦਨਾਇਆ ਕਿਸ਼ਨ ਪੈਂ ਬਦਾਇਤੇ ਕਿਸ਼ਨਾਇ ਕਿਸ਼ਨ ਚਤਨਾ ਨਾਮ ਨੇ ਗੁਰ ਸਤਨਾਮ हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु विनु पते मुस्ते चक्रकान चल गौर रामी श्री राधे वृंदावन श्री सायन ताय परमात्मा ने बलवंत सुभद्रा ब्रह्म रेना ताय नमः जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री हरि 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 सुवा सब गौर मत मिले हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरि 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 राम 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 मुखम पर सुवासा नाम पर बोल रहा है संसारी नाम करो नया प्राण दे हम पंजा समूह नाम गुरु गुरु नाम सो वी वर इन चैप्टर नंबर 12 विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम देयर सो इट्स जस्ट द नेम yes the 28th verse so many can read 28th translation and the purport would you but this we have uh, read uh, in the last class so will you okay we did that this okay so we'll go ahead of that so in this purport topaz was saying that uh, brahma ji's mind was stolen for some time but that, that was before before he had seen bhagavata so after he had seen bhagavata there is no possibility of such a incidents and then uh, propad talks about the culture of vedic culture where especially men and women would be kept at distance matra sastra do itrava namit asanam bhavet balwan indriya gramo vidyam kham bikasti so one has to be very careful not to stay in solitary place with one's uh, mother sister or daughter because the senses are so strong they can steal away the intelligence of a person of discrimination also vidyam sam so that's why such a restriction was there in the vedic culture which is not there in the modern society yes what is there to Uh, in the last class you mentioned that people uh, devotees at the stage of bhava and prem uh, can also commit mistakes or they may have so called fall down because of uh, the apraat they have done to vaishnavas sometime back or somewhere so this got me very worried prabhuji because um, i personally feel that i i would have done i i, I have done so many vaishnav apraats uh, knowingly and unknowingly because when we are new to uh, krishna consciousness we don't know the rules and regulations so we like a mundane person we do so many things which are not good in a way uh, especially with devotees so now for a person like me then there is like a perpetual fall down registered so i was obviously like very very worried so what should i do prabhu you know so you should not be worried because a uh, nama bhas stage is the stage of clearing the offenses so that means in general we do commit the offenses so the main cause of offenses is seeing spiritual as material as we had discussed before also when we see devotees as ordinary people we commit vishnu prat when we think lord vishnu as ordinary person or ordinary demigod we commit second offense when we see spiritual master ordinary person we commit third offense against the holy names 
So in this way, all the offenses are considered uh, are done because of uh, seeing spiritual as material. So as in due course of time, as we progress in Krishna consciousness, generally that uh, vision becomes clear. So if we are regularly doing Shravanam, Kirtanam, we are uh, progressing in spiritual life, then slowly, slowly we start seeing spiritual as spiritual. So uh, this is a gradual process. It's a gradual process. It's like very rarely we find somebody suddenly jumping from uh, Namapara to Sudhanam. So Namapara is like one shore of the river or one bank of the river. Na Sudhanam is the another bank of the river. The entire bridge is Namabhas. Namabhas means that our offenses are getting cleared slowly. Our offenses are getting cleared slowly. So that's why it's not a cause of worry, rather it's a cause of happiness for us. At the same time, we should be as careful as possible. See, main thing is even let us say at the level of how what till one sees Krishna face to face till that level, we may have fallen down because of Vaishnava uh, uh, Prad. But ultimately, even such a fall down would be a inspiration to progress in spiritual life. It would be an inspiration for uh, for example, below Angal Thakur. Now, just because below Angal Thakur became allured by the wife of that merchant, that doesn't minimize his position. Despite that, Lord Chaitanya would hear his, uh, read his Krishna Karnamrit, uh, so all these uh, writings of below Mangal Thakur. So what that shows, that shows, the fine, from a general point of view, it may be a great loss of prestige. But then it doesn't minimize the position of a devotee. So that's why we should be careful. At the same time, we should not do too much fear. So whatever we have done before, what we should do? We should change our culture. So main thing is we have to focus on solutions. So what is the solution? Solution is to glorify the goodness. So like uh, when Lord Chaitanya, after taking sannyas, went back, came back to Kuliagram, uh, that is now Aparat Bhanjan Sthali, so that one Brahman came and he said that if one commits one version of Prat, one can beg forgiveness from that version of But as far as I am concerned, I have offended so many version of that I don't even remember. So then Lord Sitanna gave a solution. He said, blaspheming devotee is like bringing poison and glorifying devotee is like bringing nectar. So if one is want, one wants to counteract the Effects of poison wants to drink nectar. So now glorify devotees, glorify the Vaishnavas. So there's a solution. So that's not a general culture. It's like most of us came through that now we just glorify everyone. But in due course of time, we should practice that culture. And if that becomes a habit, then such a devotee is like a never safe. So rather than having the eye of fault finding, we should have an eye of uh, seeing good in others and glorifying others. And especially for intellectuals, it's difficult. It's not, not easy. One has to work hard. Intellectuals means you see a problem. Now, how, how did we get uh, crack ITJ? We gave a, we solved the problems. So problem is first you have to see the problem only then you solve the problem. So then the general nature is we have a tendency of seeing faults. So to transform it is a big effort. I am it's like no, I'm also struggling. <laughs> so we have to do that. We have to do that. Sorry, one more thing. So uh, why it seems from my mundane vision that Mahaprabhu was very harsh on uh, Chota Haridas. So is there a is there a more context to it, Proji, or like it is what it is? Actually, Mahaprabhu was super expert. So what did what did uh, what was the end result of neglect by Mahaprabhu and Shotaridas? End result. 
I'm not sure. I mean, he committed suicide that I know, Koji, but after that, I don't know. After that, after that what happened to him? He got Sarup Siddhi. He got rid of gross body, subtle body. And he got a body resembling Gandharva. And he got an eternal service to Lord Chaitanya of singing his singing Kirtans whenever Lord Chaitanya would go for Usan Bath. So he got perfection of life. So externally, Lord Chaitanya wanted to warn all the devotees, especially those in Brown's order, to wear, be very aware or very careful not to deal with opposite sex loosely. At the same time, continue staying in the ashram. At the same time, uh, so that was the message he sent for those on renounce order. At the same time, personally with Chota Haridas, Lord Chaitanya gave him perfection of life. So okay. Lord Chaitanya is really Mahavadana. So he has given mercy to everyone, including uh, Chota Haridas. So, but being an expert leader also, he made an exam, set an example for others to follow. Because we do find actually, we do find that uh, after Lord Chaitanya left, there were so many Sahajiyas who were so much involved in illicit sex in the name of being Vaishnavas. So there were some, they would sing some songs, Bita Hari Ariya Bol, Magar Maachi Jhol, May Sangir Kul, something like that. They just chant Hari Hari, you don't have to worry. Magar Maachi Jhol, keep on eating this fish, that will cool your stomach. And you can uh, allow the girls to sit on her lap. But you do not have to worry about sins because you are chanting Hari Hari. So Mahaprabhu knew that such people are going to come in future. So for them, he set a very powerful example through Chota Haridas. But at the same time, personally with Chota Haridas, he gave him perfection. Mm -hmm. So now we can go ahead. Please read 29 translation and Bhagavad Gita. Thus, finding their father so deluded in an act of immorality, the sages headed by Marichi, all sons of Brahma, spoke as follows with great respect. Purport was divine Shila Rupa, the key jay. The sages like Marichi were not in the wrong in submitting their protest against the acts of their great father. They knew very well that even though their father committed a mistake, there must have been some great purpose behind the show. Otherwise, such a great personality could not have committed such a mistake. It might be that Brahma wanted to warn his subordinates about human frailties in the dealings with women. This is always very dangerous for persons who are on the path of self-realization. Therefore, great personalities like Brahma, even when in the wrong, should not be neglected. Nor could the great sages headed by Marichi show any disrespect because of his extraordinary behavior. Prabhupada writes that great people do great mistakes for great cause. So he did such a thing to show that uh, what is, how dangerous it is to deal with opposite sex. So how much one should be careful. And if Brahma, whose mode of goodness personified, the person who has maximum portion of mode of goodness in the entire universe, if he can be swayed away, then what to say of others? So that is what uh, Brahma ji wanted to show. And also, as we were discussing last time, Whenever we want to judge a person, we judge a person according to the entire tenure of his services. Not that just we take one mistake as all in all when we punish a person. So if somebody has done such a huge amount of services and little bit of mistake, we don't consider that mistake. So one has to see things as in an entire way, the entire picture. So you find even Prabhupada disciples, also some of the Prabhupada disciples did perform some big mistakes. Something which we may not discuss here. But Prabhupada, what he did is he kept them in such a position where their Krishna consciousness would continue. Because if a person is punished in a way where he leaves Krishna consciousness or he becomes discouraged to practice Krishna consciousness or his advancement is hindered, then where is the question? of getting rid of the bad habit or some mistake. Hmm? 
राज विद्या राज गोई हम सुसुखम कर्तमव्यम प्रत्यक्ष आगमन धर्म सुसुखम कर्तमव्या सोडत राज विद्या राज गोई हम पवित्रम इदम उत्तम पवित्रम या सो पवित्रम मींस इट इज मोस्ट प्यूरिफाइंग इट्स मोस्ट प्यूरिफाइंग सो इवन इफ समबडी इज कमिटिंग मिस्टेक what is the way of getting rid of that mistake practicing krishna consciousness so if, if he loses the opportunity to practice krishna consciousness how will this person get rid of the mistake no possibility so that's why those who are especially leaders leaders of the community of a society they have to be very careful when they are giving uh, some punishment to a vaishnava so If some Vaishnava is harming the Vaishnava community, he has to be punished or he has to be given some uh, sort of displacement, keeping him in different place or something like that. But in such a way that it doesn't hinder his progress in Vaishnava consciousness. So one has to be weighed properly. It's not easy job; it's a challenging job. Now we can read thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two. Hare Krishna, text thirty. O oh, Father, this performance in which you are endeavouring to complete yourself was never attempted by any other Brahma, nor by anyone else, nor by you in previous kalpas, nor will anyone dare to attempt it in the future. You are the supreme being in the universe. So how is it that you want to have sex with your daughter and cannot control your desire? Text thirty one. Even though you are the most powerful being, this act does not suit you because your character is followed for spiritual improvement by people in general. Text thirty two. Let us offer our respectful obeisances unto the personality of Godhead, who by his own effulgence, while situated in himself, has manifested this cosmos. May he also protect religion for all goodness. Hare Krishna. so this is a ideal way of uh, dealing when some very great personality performs some mistake so when some great personality performs mistake just by seeing character of person you can understand some people realize their mistake just by hearing that they have committed a mistake so brahma ji attitude it's like they knew that brahma is such a great personality he counseling for such a personality is enough we don't have to punish him physically verbally or in any other way so they gave him good advice that please don't do it because you are leader for so entire universe if you perform such a mistake then everybody will follow your path and fall down so that was like enough for brahma then now they knew that correcting the situation is beyond us but it is under one personality who is that krishna and that is why they offered their prayers to krishna so in our life also certain things which are in our control we should try to it's like a try to act beautifully and try to repair the situation or uh, remove the problem correct the mistakes but something which are beyond us especially you know it needs so much herculean endeavor that it is not practically possible for us then what to do just take self reflection first just take self reflection so it's like uh, and in my life all that many times it happened So, since when we were going bad and we were trying to make people aware, no, no, it's bad. But when things go went beyond uh, limit, what to do? Take self reflection. So, certain consequences in life are uh, beyond us. Beyond us. The father of all prajapatis, Brahma, thus seeing all his prajapati sons speaking in that way, became very much ashamed and at once gave up the body he had accepted. Later, that body appeared in all directions as a dangerous fog in darkness. Thank you. 
So what Brahmaji did is he saw that all these uh, sons are speaking such a way. Then he feel ashamed. What am I doing? So repentance comes in the heart of a good soul. Repentance comes in the heart of a good soul. So as soon as he heard, uh, he got, got good advice, immediately he repented. And then he gave up his body because previous body was like a body of a renouncer. Now he accepted a body in which he can enter in the Grastana. So this is not literally a body which he gave up. It's a change of mentality. Like for us, there is a mind and then we have gross body, etc. But Brahma is primarily composed of the subtle elements. So for him, giving up the body was more of a giving up the mentality. So he gave up the, that mentality of uh, running behind the daughter. And then this uh, particular body appeared in the form of a dangerous fog in the darkness. So that's extraordinary Brahma. He gave a body and it turned into fog. And then further creation by Brahma is explained that how from four mouths of Brahma, four manifestations came out. From eastern mouth came Rig Veda. From southern mouth came Yajur Veda. From western mouth came Sam Veda. From northern mouth came Athar Veda. And along with these Vedas also came the activities of the particular priest. So the four types of priest involved in the sacrifice. Brahma, Udgata, Advari, and Hota. So Hota are the one who are expert in chanting the mantras. And they generally chant the Rigveda mantras. So their activities were produced from Eastern mouth. Other you priests are the one who actually are involved in sacrificial performances. So their activities were came from southern mouth. Then uh, some, so they are the one who perform the sacrifices, the physical activities. Then there are Udgata Brahmanas who expert in singing the verses, stutis. So it's the Supreme Lord, to the demigods, etc. So they came from the Western mouth. Their activities came from the Western mouth. And then there are Brahma, those who are uh, expert in remedial measures. Because while performing sacrifices, there may be some discrepancy in the time, place, impurities, etc. So that is done by Brahma priest. So they came from the Northern mouth. And for devotees, it's very easy to uh, perform remedial methods. That is what chanting Hare Krishna. Mantrata, Santrata, Siddram, Veskala, Arta, Varsita, Sarvam Karodi, Siddram, Anu, Sarvita, Nandala. So, I Sukra Chare to Vamandev. So, Vamandev, after binding Bali Maharaj, asked uh, Sukra Chare, what mistake has your uh, disciple performed? So Sukrachar said no mistake. But just by chanting our holy names, the mistakes and the sacrifices gone. There's no more mistake. So mantra sandra sitram. Somebody may perform uh, some mistake in chanting mantras or rituals or some other mistakes. So just by doing your sankirtan, all these mistakes are gone. But my disciple has surrendered his life to you. So Bali Maharaj is the personification of uh, Saranagati. So then he has not completed any mystery. Then again, from so first Vedas came, then came Upa Vedas. So from the Eastern mouth of Brahma came Ayurveda, the medical science. From Southern mouth came the Dhanurveda. From Western mouth came the Gandharva Veda, that's musical art. Uh, Hanukkah Mara says that 
Krishna consciousness is more like a Gandhar Veda, musical art. So we are more involved in singing, chanting, dancing, Gandhar Veda. So Western mouth. From its northern mouth came Stapa Vedya, that is architectural science. How to make temples, etc. And then amazing. If we if somebody doesn't believe in God, bring him to any ancient temples. So the way temples are manufactured, no modern science can do it. So like there is a sculpture where there is a lion and it's a teacher like that and there is a ball inside the mouth. This ball is made up of a different stone. Lion is made up of a different stone. Ball cannot come out. And it's not detachable. It is made of single stone. Entire lion. So no, no modern science can make it. So the way Indian temples are made is so amazing. So it's a stapa. That's enough to believe in God. Then he made Pancham Veda, the Puranas and the Irihasas. That they came from all the mouths. So for many people who say, especially Sankarites, we don't believe in Puranas and Irihasas. They came from all the Brahma. They can't have any mistake. Again, from his different mouths, from Eastern Mount came, so does he, Uttar recitation of sacrifices. From southern mouth came Purisi and Agnishoma sacrifices. That's how to prepare fire, etc. From western mouth came Apatarayam and Atiratri sacrifices. From northern mouth came Vajpayas sacrifices, that's Asumedia gas, and Gusava, that's Gomedia gas. So they came from his northern mouth. Again, from his four mouths came. Four legs of dharma. Vidya, Dan, Tapa, Satyam. So these are four legs of dharma. So knowledge and charity. So knowledge and charity are equivalent to Socham and Daya. The so, Socham, Daya, uh, Danam, no, Socham, Daya. Yes. Okay. Socham, Tapa, Tapa, Satyam. They are the four legs of dharma. They are called. So Vidya is considered equivalent to Socham because with purity comes knowledge. The more to the degree the mind is pure, one is knowledgeable. And to the degree one is charitable, one gets compassion. There. So there are four legs of Brahma, or sorry, legs of Dharma, which came from four mouths of Brahma. From his body came four uh, asramas, Brahmacharya asram, Grastha asram, Vanpas asram, Sanyas asram. From his eastern mouth came uh, Savitra Brahmachari, those who remain celibate for three nights. That was the minimum qualification for anyone in the upper three Brahmana, uh, upper three ashrams. Upper three, not ashrams, but three Varnas. Savitra. Then those who remain celibate for one year called Prajapatya, which came from southern mouth. Those who remain Brahmanas, those who are uh, celibate still, they complete the learning of the Vedas in the Guru's Asana. So they are called Brahmana. They came from Western mouth. And from Northern mouth came Brahatvritas. Those who are lifelong celibates. So they came from the Northern mouth. Then again from four mouths came four Asrams. So from Eastern mouth came Varta. Like occupations not uh, forbidden, like agriculture, etc. From southern mouth came Sanjay performing sacrifices. From western mouths came Salina taking arms without begging. And from northern mouth came Silonchana taking the fallen grains in the fields. Actually, these are all four types of basically Brahmanas. So, lowest category of Brahmanas. They perform occupations which don't involve any sort of violence, like agriculture, etc. So, Brahmanas under Apa Dharma. Apa Dharma means when they don't have enough money to survive. They are recommended that they can perform the activities of Vaisyas. 
like agriculture, cow protection, trade, etc. In case they can't survive with that also, then they can perform the activities of Satriyas. Like uh, in one way you can say, Dronachara did. Teaching martial arts and uh, he even involved in martial arts in Kurukshetra war. But it was not an emergency, so it was condemned. Dronachara's position was condemned. And but it is said that it should, this will never work under someone else. This will never perform the work of sutras, taking salary and having a master. So it is said that better than doing that, a brahmana should die. Die out of them. Because if you have a master, you are forced to do something which you, do, you are not supposed to do. So Varta. Now the little higher are called those who perform sancha. Sancha means they perform sacrifices. So when one performs sacrifice for other people, sometimes one may have to perform sacrifice for people who are not eligible, they are greedy, lusty, irreligious. So then, but still because it involves the worship of Vishnu, it is considered higher. Higher than those, uh, that is those who are, uh, those Brahmanas who take arms without begging. That means they teach perform duty worship, etc. And then whatever comes on its own accord, they survive on that. But the highest brahmanas are those who perform salonchana. Salonchana means whenever vessels they husk the rice or paddy or uh, anything, so then some grains fall in the fields. So brahmanas go and broom it, take those things in the with them. And brahmanis, they filter the dust and that is how they survive on those things. So that's how Silvancharan. So that means they don't depend on anyone for the survival. So they are the highest. Now comes four types of one pastas. From Eastern mouth came Vekhanas, those who live in wild grains. Any green which has grown here and there, nobody has planted. They are called uh, Lowest level of one pastas. Not even I they are the lowest level of one pastas. Valkilya, they give up the, they don't accumulate grains. Every day search for grains. So they are a little higher. Totally depending on the Lord every day. So for such a husband and wife doing one prasta, very difficult. But then they are even higher. Those who came from Western mouth, they are called Odambara. So they get up early in the morning, they walk in one direction, and in that direction, whatever they get for their survival, they take that. Whatever fruits, vegetables come. If they go in that direction, let us for one hour, two hours, nothing came, they remain hungry. They continue their uh, austerities. And highest are called Fenapa. Those who survive only on the grains which are thrown by vessels or the fruits which have fallen in the ground naturally and nobody places them. So they are four type of one persons. So very difficult in Kali Yoga. So we do talk about purification of Varnasam, but very difficult. Sannasis, four type of Sannasis come from four mouths. Kutichak, Bahudar, Hamsa and Nisriya. They came from Eastern, Southern, Western, and Northern Mouth. Kutichaka is the first level of sannyasis. So after taking one prastha, when a person is sufficiently detached, he hands over wife in the hands of uh, children. And then he begins his sannyas process from the village itself. So such people, they make a kutiya. They make a hermitage in the outskirts of the village and they, they are focused on their bhajan and at the same time their children come and give them prasad. So that is how they survive. But when he becomes a little more uh, ad advanced so then he just focuses on jnana, developing knowledge and he becomes bahuvada 
where he begs from different different houses. Let us say three houses or something like that. And uh, then they survive on that. Then they become much more advanced. They roam around. They are called Hamsas. So they roam around depending on Krishna, whether he'll, if he wants us to live, we'll live. If he wants us to kill, then we'll die. Somebody gives us uh, uh, arms, we'll survive on that. So such a person has fixed in knowledge, jnana, and then uh, he roams around. And when one becomes very advanced, then he becomes niskriya. Niskriya means he has attained realizing that I am not body, I am soul. So such a person performs ajgara vritti like uh, Rishabdev. So Rishabdev would uh, eat whatever comes on its own accord and not beg. Same thing was true with uh, Madhavid Puri also. Somebody comes and gives him milk, this, that, he survives, otherwise he fasts. So that's Niskriya, the highest. So they came from four mouths of Brahma. Then again from four mouths came uh, logic, that's called Anvikshi. Then Dharma, Artha, Kam, the Vedic goals, then Danda, law and order required for Manu, etc. And Niti, Niti is the moral course. So like we have Vidur Niti, Sukra uh, Niti, etc. So the moral course. So that came from four months. Also from the four months came Bhuva, Bhu, Bhuva, Swa and their combination. Three worlds and their combination. From his heart came Pranam Omkar, which is non different from Krishna. Then uh, from his bodily hairs, Brahma is these bodily hairs. Came Kushnik, there are 28 slavers. Another 24 slavers, that's called Gayatri Chandas, they came from the skin. From his flesh and muscles came Trishtuk Chanda. Then from his veins came Anushuk Chanda, 32 slavers. That is uh, Anushuk Chanda, generally in that uh, Bhagavad Gita and Ramayana are written. Valmiki Ramayana. And from his bones came Jagati Chanda. From bone marrow came Pankhi, Pankhi, art of writing words. That's in Hindi words called Pankhi, writing a line. From Pran, from his life years came Prahati, the another way of writing words. From his soul or life came Sparsa. So we will not go in that uh, details. That's when you learn to speak uh, Sanskrit words. There's sparsa. Sparsa means touching. Talu, when we touch with the talu, etc. Danta, when we speak some words, then uh, teeth, they come together called danta. So there are different types of sparsas. From his body came swara, a, a, e, e, u, u, v, z, etc. So they all came. From his sense came Ushmadam, sibling alphabets, sha, sha, ha, um, ah. So this all. Then from Andastha, those will need in a strength. So that came from strength, Andastha. And uh, Saregama Padani came from sensual activities. So that is how from, his, from Brahma all these things came out. So we read the summary. Now we'll go in detail. So Radial means already explained it. You can read and uh, somebody has some question they may ask. Please read 34, 35, 36. Once upon a time, when Brahma was thinking of how to create the worlds, as in the past millennium, the four Vedas, which contain all varieties of knowledge, became manifested from his four mouths. The four kinds of paraphernalia for conducting the fire sacrifice became manifest. The performer, the chanter, the offerer, the fire, and the action performed in terms of the supplementary Vedas. Also, the four principles of religiosity, truth, austerity, mercy, and cleanliness, and the duties in the four social orders all became manifest. 
Vidura said, Oh great sage, who on whose only wealth is penance, kindly explain to me how and with whose help Brahma established the, this, the Vedic knowledge which emanated from his mouth. Maitreya said, Beginning from the front face of Brahma, gradually the four Vedas, Vedic Yajur, Sam, and Atharva became manifest. Thereafter, Vedic hymns, which had not been pronounced before, priestly rituals, subject matters of the recitation, and transcendental activities were all established one after another. Thank you. We already read them all these things. We described them also. So all, all these things came out very well from Brahma. Please read 38 to 41. Hare Krishna, text 38. He also created the medical science, military art, musical art, and architectural science all from the Vedas. They all emanated one after another, beginning from the front face. Text 39. Then he created the fifth Veda, the Puranas, and the histories from all his mouths, since he could see all the past, present, and future. Text 40. All the different varieties of fire sacrifices, Sodasi, Ukta, Purisi, Agnistoma, Aptoryama, Adiratra, Vajapeya, and Goshava became manifested from the eastern mouth of Brahma. Text 41. Education, charity, penance, and truth are said to be the four legs of religion. And to learn this, there are four orders of life with different classification of castes according to vocation. Brahma created all these in systematic order. Hare Krishna. Read the purport also. Okay. The nucleus of the four social orders, Brahmacharya or student life, Grihastha or householder family life, Panaprastha or retired life for practicing penance, and Sannyasa or renounced life for preaching the truth, is the four legs of religion. The vocational divisions are the Brahmanas or the class, the Satriyas or administrative class the Vaishas or merchandise productive class and the Sudras or general la laborer class who have no specific qualifications. All were systematically planned and created by Brahma for the regular promotion of self-realization. Student life is meant for acquiring the best education. Household family life is meant for gratifying the senses, provided it is performed with a charitable disposition of mind. Retirement from household life is meant for penance, for advancement in spiritual life, and renounced life is meant for preaching the absolute truth to the people in general. The combined action of all members of society make the, make the whole situation favorable for the upliftment of the mission of human life. The beginning of this social institution is based on education meant for purifying the animal propensities of the human being. The highest purificatory process is knowledge of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the purest of the pure. Hare Krishna. Thank you. So all these things were created by Brahma. And if we see, these things are undeniable even in the today. Even in the today's world, especially we talk about Varnas. So all Varnas are there. There are people who teach there are people who fight and rule. There are people who have trade. And there are people who work under others. So they are always required. But what is missing actually is the system of ashram. So Brahmacharya means there are students even today. But then they are not taught celibacy. Practically speaking, household families are like moving out, they are practically missing nowadays. There are so many disturbances in the family life. Hardly there is a question of one prastha and what to serve some. So the, these four asramas are meant for spiritual upliftment of the people. So varnas are required for the society to run, so they will exist anyway. But even in them also, the difference is that when it is centered in Vedic culture that's around Lord Vishnu, activities of Varnas also elevate a person. Like when I went to Kerala, 
So they had a traditional system of fighting in a art called Kalari. So they like fight with swords. I kept that in my YouTube channel also. So I have took an interview of a person who was fighting. He was a doctor basically by professor, but he was expert in Kalari. So you are telling that how by performing this only, once chakras, they become uh, jagrat. Jagrat means they get enlightenment. One gets spiritual enlightenment by fighting. So this art was personally taught to uh, Parasanam by Lord Shiva. And then it came down the parampara. So there was trade, there was fighting, everything was there. But there was, it was all... But it was all done in such a way that it helps in a person's irrigation rather than degradation. So for example, Chhatriyas, when they would fight with Chhatriya force, it would be thrilling. You go and challenge a person and then you fight with some quotes and rules and regulations. But nowadays, if you talk about uh, the soldiers who fight nowadays, it's many times puzzling. You don't know where the enemy is. And there's constant bombardment of bombs from here and there. So things are so puzzling, person doesn't know what to do. Sometimes firing is just like, you no know, shooting a uh, bullets here and there. So then there's no thrill. No sport spirit is there. Same thing about trade. Trade was done according to the demand of people. So people demand certain things and you supply it. But nowadays trade is more of creating the demand. It is more of creating a demand. So we go in any field we find like that. Like our, earlier, hardly there were uh, use of mobiles. But then one popular person came in India and he told my father had a dream that now everybody should have his mobile. Now people can live without Wi-Fi but not without a mobile. Now wife has gone for four days, no problem, but mobiles should not go away for even uh, no four hours. So this becomes such a part of life. So these are called artificial needs, which are necessarily added in the system of people. Or uh, let me be truthful, like in our coaching industry also, when um, we gave entrance exams, it was only those who were very intelligent students, they would aspire for these things. Nowadays, everybody, it's like it has become a culture. Anybody entering in class 11, class 12, they come and give entrance exams. And we teachers also know that some of them know that two the first. It's like you just can't teach them. They don't know the basic level mathematics of uh, like no, I'm going to another like I was asking one student. So this is charge q, this is minus two q. So what is q minus two q? He doesn't know. Then what is x minus two x? Yeah, I don't know. At least you know what is one minus two. He says, yeah, that's one minus. And now he's studying class 12, how what will you teach him? Similar difference is, and I asked him, why he's preparing for ID? And it's like, what is D, D, dx square by dx? I don't know, sir. What is dx by dx? I, I was absent in the class yesterday. So it's like, the way it, things are advertised in such a way, it creates artificial instincts. And it's just because of trade, just because of trade. And of course, anyway, everybody is grasta here, so they must be knowing how so many artificial necessities are created. So something which you don't need, it becomes like a necessity. So Chhatriyas. Similarly for Sudras also, those who are Sudras, they are really loyal to the masters. But uh, nowadays, no, changing companies like Every some people just change the company every six months, one year, and you know you change the company and you get high. So that is how there is no concept of loyalty. There is no concept of loyalty. So things are getting degraded, and because of that, uh, center of spiritual life is totally gone out. It's taken out. 
because when things are in a proper place, then it gives a peace of mind. When there is a peace of mind, one will focus on Krishna. So that's how to burn up. And asramas are totally missing. There's no concept of asramas. So like Prabhupada was, especially in Supernatural, we say Prabhupada is like so strong. Student life means celibacy. And nowadays, student life means they do all nonsense. There is no question of celibacy. So that is how. There is no one and no asam. Or one has degraded nowadays. And there is no asam. Please read 42 transcripts and part <laughs> then the thread ceremony for the twice born was inaugurated as were the rules to be followed for at least one year after acceptance of the Vedas. Rules for observing complete abstinence from sex life, vocations in terms of Vedic injunctions, various professional duties in household life, and the method of maintaining a livelihood without anyone's cooperation by picking up rejected grains. During student life, the brahmacharis were given full instructions about the importance of human form of life. Thus, the basic education was designed to encourage the student in becoming free from family encumbrances. Only students unable to accept such a vow in life were allowed to go home and marry a suitable wife. Otherwise, the student would remain a permanent brahmachari, observing complete abstinence from sex life for his whole life. It all depended on the quality of the student's training. We had the opportunity to meet and a vow brahmachari in the personality of our spiritual master, Om Vishnu Paz Sri Srimad Bhattisham Goswami Maharaj. Such a great soul is called Nastika Brahmachari. Thank you. So that is how brahmacharis were, would follow celibacy and apart from Guru's wife, no other women was able to them. So, because once one person's mind is uh, absorbed in the thought of opposite sex. It's difficult to understand the spiritual subject matters, which are so subtle. So, to the degree a person is involved in sense gratification, to the degree one becomes unqualified to understand the spiritual nuances. So, that is how that training was there in the Brahmsari life. Also in the brahmacharya life, people were taught to survive in all circumstances. There would be a lot of ups and downs in life. So if one is too much addicted to sense gratification, one can't survive. Like uh, I remember with, it happened with one devotee that he lost his job. And uh, not lost his job, basically it's like it was a recession time. And he had a backache, heavy backache was there. So doctor advised him, he told him that if you work more hard, then you will be better than within one, one year. So you, you can't work so hard. And because it was a recession time, so uh, boss told him you have to work twice more harder. Otherwise, no, we'll give other person and fire you. So then his wife said, first you look for body, just take care of your health and then later on we can survive. But then he said, no, how can I take a less paying job? We have so many expenses. Our son is addicted to eating pizza every day. Dominus pizza. So if, he, if I get less money, how will, uh, how will we survive? And then son also, it's like he became addicted such an opulence, they were not ready to give leader like a simpler life. So, but those who are, those who live the life of a brahmachari lived uh, in a condition in which even a uh, most poor person can live. When such people, they are, they don't have fear of any situation. So, brahmachari life would train people to enter in the they will be taught to keep Krishna center from childhood, read Vedic hymns. They will be taught, uh, apart from how to earn money, they were also taught 
how to survive in different situations. So Brahmachari life would me to live, learn to live without women. Then my you know how to clean your house. You know how to cook. You know how to uh, wash our clothes. So in this way, all the things were taught so that a person can handle any situation by. So that training is possible nowadays. And unfortunately, in the houses, that training is not given at all. Not perfect. Now, please read 43rd transition purport and front 44 also. The four divisions of retired life are the Vaikhanas, Valakhilias, uh, Audambaras, and Pirinapas. The four divisions of the renounced order of life are the Kutichakas, Bahavadas, Hamsas, and Nishkriyas. All these were manifested from Brahma. The Varnasham Dharma, or the institution of the four divisions in orders of social and spiritual life, is not a new invention of the modern age. As proposed by the less intelligent, it is an institution established by Brahma in the beginning of the creation. This is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 4.13, Chatur Varnyam Maya Shristam. The science of logical argument, the Vedic, with the Vedic goals of life, and also law and order, moral codes, and the celebrated hymns, Buh, Bua, and Swa, all became manifested from the mouths of Brahma, and the Pranava Omkara was manifested from his heart. Thank you. So we already read that. See, anything uh, which was there in Vidhi was in perfection. Like education system also. Nowadays, some countries are trying to adopt their education system. So education system within uh, Gurukuls was that you are encouraged to study all the topics or all the subjects. At the same time, one can uh, develop himself in whatever he's good at. Like for example, a student may be on class 10th in mathematics, class 5th in physics. He may be doing a master's in uh, English and he may be still in uh, KG in economics. Quite possible. What I mean to say is, it's like People were given the opportunity to develop in the field which they are expert in. And that is how one naturally evolves into a person with proper varna according to his purposes. And when a person performs the work which is natural for him, it's not a burden. It's not a burden. Otherwise, uh, the grasta life becomes a burden for a person. He does something which he doesn't like. So then the entire life becomes a burden. So that's why Varnasaram would take care of the subtle body of people, the propensity of people. So whatever your propensity is, you can uh, please Krishna by fulfilling this propensity. Please read 45 46, 47. And 48 hours. Hare Krishna, text 45. Thereafter, the art of literary expression, Usnik, was generated from the hairs of, on the body of the Almighty Prajapati. The principal Vedic hymn, Gayatri, was generated from the skin, Tristup from the flesh, Anustup from the veins, and Jagadi from the bones of the Lord of the living entities. Text 46. The dart of writing verse, Pankti, became manifested from the bone marrow and that of Brihati, another type of verse, was generated from the life bread of the Lord of the living entities. Text 47, Brahma's soul was manifested as the touch alphabets, his body as the vowels, his senses as the civilian alphabet, his strength as the intermediate alphabets, and his sensual activities as the seven notes of music. Text 48, Brahma is the personal representation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, 
as a source of transcendental so sound and is therefore above the conception of manifested and unmanifested. Brahma is the complete form of the absolute truth and is invested with multifarious energies. Hare Krishna. Thank you. We only read them. And then Brahma is glorified as the source of transcendental sound. And it is said that Brahma is the complete form of absolute truth. So why is it spoken that that? Because Brahma here is glorified as Gunavatar. So he's a living entity, but he's also Gunavatar. So that's why he's, that aspect of Brahma is glorified here as the complete form of absolute truth. Please read 49. Thereafter, Brahma accepted another body in which sex life was not forbidden and thus he engaged himself in the matter of further creation. Thank you. So now Brahmaji was like a, uh, he accepted the body of a grasta. So earlier body was like more of a sannasi body which was not a uh, uh, defeating a life of a namusri, so of a grasta. Now he accepted the grasta life, grasta body. And then he creation. Please read P51, P253. O son of the Kurus, when Brahma saw that in spite of the presence of sages of great potency, there was no sufficient increase in population, he seriously began to consider how the population would be increased. Brahma thought to himself, Alas, it is wonderful that in spite of my being scattered all over, there is still insufficient population throughout the universe. There is no other cause for this misfortune but destiny. While he was thus absorbed in contemplation and was observing the supernatural power, the two other forms were generated from his body. They are still celebrated as the body of Brahma. The two newly separated bodies united together in a sexual relationship. Thank you. So now Brahmaji, after creating everything, creating the sages, getting them married, etc., he was finding sages are too much in goodness. It's like they are not good for creating the population. And then he was wondering how to increase the population. So it was his surface service to create a population so that people can get body for fulfilling their desires. Uh, of sense gratification at the same time getting an opportunity to practice Krishna consciousness and go back and back to God. And. But then he was not able to serve Krishna properly. So after he gave up all his endeavors, he was just thinking on Krishna. My dear Lord, it's too difficult for, to do this service. And then suddenly two bodies appeared in front of him. And who are there? They are Swambhu, Manu and Satyarupa. So they generated, they just uh, became manifest from them. So there are many people say, oh, they are also like brother and sister. There is an entire uh, spiritual organization this call every woman as sister. And they say everybody is brother and sister only. But it's not like that. We see here, it suddenly appeared in front of Brahma. It suddenly appeared in front of Brahma. And Brahmaji's creation of entities was not like the way men and women unite and produce it. So that is how Swamu Vana Sakripa. Such people don't uh, read scriptures properly. Please read for 54, 55, 56, 57. Fifty-four. Text 54. Out of them, the one who had the male form became known as a Manu named Swayambhuva and the woman became known as Satarupa, the queen of the great soul, Manu. Text 55. Thereafter, by sex indulgence, it gradually increased generations of population one after another. Text 56. O son of Bharata, in due course of time, he, Manu, begot in Satarupa 
Rupa, five children, two sons, Priya Vrata and Uthana Pada, and three daughters, Akuti, Devahudi, and Prasuti. Text 57, the father Manu handed over his first daughter, Akuti, to the sage, Ruchi, the middle daughter, Devahudi, to the sage, Kardama, and the youngest, Prasuti, to Daksha. From them, all the world filled with population. Hare Krishna. Thank you. So that is how the population began. So Swami one who had five children, two sons, three daughters. So two sons are Priyavarta, a great devotee of the Lord himself. Uttan Pada, his son was Dhruv, a great devotee of the Lord. Aguti was married to Ruchi and there was son was Yagya. So Lakshmi Narayan came from them, from Aguti and Ruchi. From Devuti came Lord Kapila. Personality about it. From Prasuti came Sati, who was married to Lord Shiva. So it's like a entire family was connected to Krishna. Krishna or great devotees. So that is the entire uh, uh, family of someone. And then how the generation began from that would be described in the next chapter. So that was like 20 of us. So I'll just summarize them and then we'll end. So we talked about, discussed more of uh, Sarga and Visarga. Sarga was a primary case. So Mahavishnu glances on Prakriti. And then Pradhan turns into Mahatatta. Mahatatta has three portions. One in goodness. One more dominating in uh, passion is called Sutra Tattva. One more dominating in uh, ignorance is called Ahankar. Ahankar has goodness, passion, ignorance and prominence. One which has ignorance and prominence, from that comes the Panchatvas, earth, water, fire, and each other. One with passion, from that comes the intelligence, the pran, the senses. Then one with the goodness, from that comes the sense, the utas, and the mind. So this is 24 elements are created. Along the 24 elements, as elemental devtas are created, this elemental devtas were not able to mix with each other. So then all these devtas offered prayers to Lord Mahavishnu. And then Mahavishnu sent this Bhubrat Sakti, Kali. There's the coolant populating potency. So then they were able to mix together all the elements. And from those elements, now the entire Karanusana was filled. Then from each and every core of Mahavishnu came one one universe. It became bigger and bigger and bigger. But it had no activity. And all the living entities were waiting for getting different bodies. So then Dharmadaksha Vishnu, Karnadaksha Vishnu entered as Dharmadaksha Vishnu in the universe. He filled the half of the universe by sweat. That became Dharmadaksha. He was lying on Anansis. Still the living entities are waiting. Then from his navel came the lotus. Top of lotus appeared, Lord Brahma. And the living entities were also injected from the stem of the lotus in the lotus. So Brahma did desire to see four directions. He got four heads. Then Brahma ji was trying to find the source of his existence. He was going up and down. He became very fearful by the raging waves of Garvata Saga. So he came on the top of that. Then he started and then he performed austerities for 100 years. So because of that, he got darshan of the Lord and uh, he got further instructions to create the universe again. So he worshipped the Lord by the ingredients of the lotus and he created first three planetary systems and then four planetary systems. Uh, of course, uh, before Brahma was also this, uh, 
Bernard Room was created, who is like created the entire universe. So Brahma created the entire universe from that photovoltaic system, and that uh, creation is called Visarga. We had our Visarga also. So we had our Visarga the primary creation, Visarga the secondary creation. And then further creation after Sambhu Manu will be discussed in the next section. So that ends our this section of Bhakti Vara. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. So, uh, Prabhuji, I, I think uh, in this segment, this is our last class with you. We are very sad, <laughs> to be very frank. Extremely sad that uh, uh, this is our last class, but uh, I would like to say a few words and hopefully others who are uh, students can also say something. So, firstly, Prabhuji, all glories to your devotional service. That I don't know your age, but still at such a young age, you are like, <laughs> like giving such nice classes. So it is really amazing and you are like uh, a very good example for all of us when how to read the Shastras and be a good Vaishnava. And in our Bhakti Bhav, of course, this is the first time a Griyastha teacher has come to teach us. So th this is also very special for us. And uh, um, and we were able to take some liberties with you, like ask so many questions. I, I hope uh, uh, in case we did any offenses to you, <laughs> you Roji, please forgive us <laughs> with folded hands. So that is my request. And, uh, and you are very inspiring, Prabhuji, in a way, because uh, you continued the classes even with the no light and the internet used to give us give you issues, but you continued the classes, so it's very inspiring. And we technically, in terms of the, the tattva, you were like so sound, uh, so clear, so you could take all the kinds of queries and you would quote Prabhupada examples as if you had personally seen them. So this was very amazing, so like you will quote Prabhupada example, so that was like, I really uh, liked those things, enjoyed those things so much. And really your personal anecdotes were very, very <laughs> wonderful and living. I remember the two, especially the one that the mason working at your home was singing a song, like trying to like uh, make fun of you in a way. There was a mason working at your home, you gave the example, Prabhupada. And the second was uh, this, uh, when your maternal grandmother passed away and then you were giving a a discourse and then there were some ladies uh, like doing some kind of uh, discussion, internal discussion. So these these uh, these points really made a mark uh, in my mind and I was like always reflecting on them. Uh, and really, uh, uh, I'm very happy to also discover your YouTube channel, which I, uh, whatever is posted, <laughs> I, I always uh, uh, listen and I'm also taking benefit of your Previous classes, Prabhuji, which are like very nice. So, all in all, like uh, it has been an exceptionally good uh, uh, three units with you, Prabhuji. The time was like passing very fast. Uh, this is what I feel, I'm sure everybody felt. So, even though I'm very sad that uh, uh, this is like an end in this segment, but I'll pray that we'll get you in uh, in more units in the future. So, this is my prayer, Prabhuji. Thank you so much for your association, Prabhuji. And I, and I hope you can continue to guide us, Prabhuji. So that is very important for our future life. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Anyone Thank else? Yes, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Uh, Prabhu has said so many things that I wanted to say. Uh, I will just want to say my gratitude. I've learned, actually, as uh, Ridhara Prabhu said, that uh, your your dedications, your uh, knowledge, it's uh, beyond what I, I could see. Like, I don't know what's your age, but it really encourages me and motivates me to actually read more, get no more information. And you helped out with many examples, your personal experiences, all this have actually, I could relate to it and make me remember all the things that you taught us. So uh, with Krishna's mercy, with Guru's mercy, we hope to have you more, uh, giving us more classes in future. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Is there anyone else? I'm also grateful to all our devotees that uh, I got the opportunity to speak. So I'm grateful to all the devotees. I got the opportunity to serve all of you by sharing uh, uh, Sivan Bhagavatam. And also all of you uh, ask a lot of questions, which I like. So discussions. Discussions make uh, Krishna Katha very relatable. 
स्मरंता स्मारयंत सामितो अगो घर मरे भक्ता संजाता भक्त भक्ता विवर्तित कुल काम करने सुकृष्णा स्पीक्स्टु उदवा सुस्मरंता स्मारयंत सिर्फ देवूटी सल्पी किचना जो देवमर कृष्णा मितो अगो घर मरे लड़ साउदी का रेट ऑफ ऑल अनसस भक्ता संजाता भक्ता सो वन देवूटी इंस्पायर्स अदर्स देवूटी to practice bhakti. So I also got inspired by all of you. So thank you very much for that. And uh, have I offended anyone? Please forgive me. Uh, because many of you are quite senior also. So please forgive my offenses for that. And kindly bless me so that I can go ahead in my journey of Krishna consciousness. And continue serving all of you. Continue serving all the Vaishnavas, Prabhupada. So this bless me. Hari. So we can end. Yes, we can. We can. We can intro again. Andhra Shiman Bhagavatam ki jai. Shri Bhagavad ki jai. Vansha kar padu vasha kar pasin vasha patya naam pavne jo vasha. Shri Bhagavad ki. Jo 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 jo. That's in future also. Hey, Roji. We will remain in touch in the future also. Oh, yes, Prabhuji, definitely, Prabhuji, definitely. Yes, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji.